Hi, this is Dan Abbott. I am making this video for my SOLIDWORKS class at Southern Maine Community College. There's a particular part in the belt tightening, tightening assembly that you're doing that I wanted to just quickly go through. And that's the shaft right here because it's got a couple of interesting elements. One of which is that the shaft itself is uh, dimensioned in millimeters, but there's a woodruff key slot that is dimensioned in inches because it calls for a 406 woodruff key, which is a, an imperial um, woodruff key. So I have a SOLIDWORKS drawing set up. I'm going to start by sketching. I'm going to sketch this in the front view. First thing I'm going to do is put a center line that goes down to the middle because this is axially symmetrical. Start on this end over here. I'm just going to sketch the basic outline of the shaft. This comes up like that, comes over, goes up again, comes over a little bit, comes down comes back. Now I'll put the dimensions on here. The overall dimension, the overall length is 134. Put that on first. And now we have the distance from the end to here. That's 25 millimeters. And it's 70 millimeters from here. Bring that up a little bit. From that edge to this edge, and then at least 24, like 24 to the end of the thread. Since the thread is going to be on that same piece anyway, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Now it's a question of dimensioning the diameters. So we'll do that one is 16 for the thread part. That part right there is 19. And then this piece right here is 22. All right, now I'm not going to put the hole in there in the middle. I'm going to put that in as a drilled hole. So now I'm just going to go over to features. We'll revolve this. Comes out like that. And we have our basic, uh, our basic shaft. Um, now there's a thread on one end. <clears throat> you can just place that on there as a, as a cosmetic thread. It's also a chamfer on that end. What I'm going to do is to show you what, how to put that um, woodruff key in. So we'll look at this from the front. Because we rotated this around an axis, the front plane goes right down the middle of this part. Because it goes down the middle of this part, it's going to be easy to just draw in that semicircle that represents the woodruff key. This dimension right here indicates that the thickness, the width of the slot itself is 124 thousandths. The radius of that arc, 375 thou, and then the depth, how far down it goes from the top edge down to the bottom is 251.8. Those come directly from the dimensions for a Woodruff key. So I'm going to sketch on the front plane, um, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'll just start by sketching a, an arc in here. Now, the reason I didn't put that center down here is because the way that key is in there, it's not the center that's going to determine where it goes. I'll now take that edge right there, and we'll do a convert entities. And I'm going to trim that. Sorry. I'm going to trim this and this and this. So there's the shape that I want. Put a dimension on here, and the radius of that is given as 375 thousandths of an inch. You notice I'm drawing in millimeters. In order to put that in, I just have to type 375 and either put the inch mark or the number or the letters IN, and it'll automatically convert it into metric for me. Now the depth of this from here to the bottom, I'm holding the shift key down when I pick that. The depth is given as 251, so 25.2518, again, inches. Now I have the depth. Now the only thing I need to do is indicate the center location. The center location goes from here to the center of that, and it's 11. There's a Woodruff key, and now all I've got to do is a, yeah, all I have to do is a mid-plane extruded, extruded cut to get the width of that and the thickness or the width, 124,000. Come up here, I exited the sketch, sorry, and then go back in. Come up here to features, and come over here to extruded cut. You need to pick 
make plane and just type in 0.124 again the inch mark or the letters I am that'll then cut that slot for you that's all you need to do there the other thing I was going to mention is the end of this the end of this has a, uh, a threaded hole and it's for a pipe thread it's got an eighth inch American standard pipe thread so again the idea here is you're dealing with some um, elements that are measured in inches and other elements, most of the elements are measured in millimeters. You know, the, the best way to do that, the easiest way to do that is to use the hole wizard. I'm going to come up here, pick hole wizard. When you, yeah, I'm not sure why it's telling me that. There's some font that it's not finding. I don't know why it didn't install it when I installed it, but we'll worry about it later. First, you have to indicate a position. We don't have to do this first, but I always do. Pick the surface you want to go on. Just put it right in the center. When we're all done with that, we come over here. You want to make sure that that sketch is fully defined, by the way, which it is because we went to the center. Now, you've got a number of different types of holes here. The one that's the default is a counter bore. But right in here, you've got the tapered tap. So what you need to do is just go down and say you want a tapered tap. It's going to be ANSI inch. Eighth inch happens to be, probably because I've already done it once, happens to be the one that's been selected there. That takes care of this. Now the question is how deep does that go? I don't think it specifies how deep it goes. So we'll indicate that it goes down about five millimeters. So when we come down here, the tap drill says up till next. We don't want the tap drill going up to next. We want the tap drill going in there blind as well. Although 8.3, I think that is probably the minor diameter. So let's just have it go all the way in. So we'll go 44. So the tap drill is going to go 44. That'll give us that long hole that comes down in here. I'll check that afterward to make sure that's correct. There's the thread right there. Um, we're going to put a cosmetic thread on there as well. And the depth of 6, and I said 5, we'll go with 6.25. Come back out here like this. Now that is the right size hole for a, a pipe thread, a type of pipe thread. The hidden line is a cosmetic thread. Um, that's a simplified version. If you want to have it look like a thread, you've got to go up to the options pull down, which isn't showing right here. So I'll just make that big enough so it is. Under options, document properties, detailing. Let's say you want to have a shaded cosmetic thread. Come back out and it looks like that. Now let's check and see if I'm right that all we needed to do was take the pilot hole all the way down. It says 8.3. So I'm going to take a look at that. We'll go to evaluate. I'm going to measure that. And it tells me the diameter is 0.33 inches. Well, let's go and ask it to tell me in millimeters. So I don't have to do any math. 8.43. That's pretty darn close. So I think we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Um, it doesn't, all that needs is a, I'm not even sure why they go to a 10 probably because they thought that was the minor diameter of that thread. That's just an oiler hole, so it doesn't make any difference how accurate it is. So that's the part right there. And the only other um, thing of interest here is that there's a hole that goes 90 degrees, so that hole that just get, went through there. Um, and that hole is centered at 12 back from here. And there are a number of ways you can do that. I'm going to put the hole on the top, so let's take a look at the top plane. I could put a plane on there that is tangent to the top of this. But again, because we drew this so that we're right on um, the center line, the center line goes right down through the origin. I don't have to do anything with a special plane. I can simply sketch on the top plane. You don't need a hole wizard for this because it's just going to go straight through. Line it up on the center line, put the hole in there. The diameter of that hole is 8.3. Again, a little unusual that it would be called out as 8.3 when it's only for oil to go through, but that's what it is. That should line up on the center line so we can go ahead and pick the, the origin and that point and say line them up vertically. Then it's just a question of putting a dimension, locating the center of the hole from here. That's 12. Looks like that. Now that's right dead center in this part. So in order to make that work, I'm going to come over here to features and do a cut. Now, you could do through all in both directions. It's very unlikely that will ever cause you a problem here. 
Generally speaking, I don't like to do a through-all cut, so I've been emphasizing the up to surface apps, apps uh, application. So direction one, I'm going to pick a surface up here. Then I'm going to go down direction two and pick another surface, and that surface will be up here. Is that going to do it for me? Oh, not blind, up to surface here as well. So now I'm going up to surface in both directions, so it'll go all the way through the part. If you look at this by cutting it in half, see what we have now is that shape right there. And what the purpose of that is, it's going to be an oil cup that's screwed in here. Oil is going to flow through, come out here. The bushing that that sits in is going to have a groove that sits right over there. That groove is going to have another groove across it. That's this bushing right here. So there's an oil groove right there. And when you put the bushing in, that groove will sit on top of that hole. There's also, it looks almost like a keyway, but it's really another oil groove that goes the length of it. And that's to distribute oil as it goes through.